The history of sugar begins with cane sugar. Sugar cane has been cultivated for thousands of years. The sweetener appeared in Europe at the time of the Crusades. Around 200 years ago, sugar beet grown in Europe became a serious competitor to imported sugar cane. From then on, the European sugar industry, as well as sugar consumption, experienced a tremendous boom. Today, internationally operating sugar companies dominate the market, and numerous local sugar factories have been closed down. With their works, the artists in this exhibition reflect on the history of sugar production, which is associated with various forms of colonialism. Ilona Nemet's work is of particular significance. Her many years of artistic research into the history of the Slovak sugar industry and its gradual demise provided the impetus for the transnational project within which this exhibition takes place. The interactive installation Eastern Sugar Archive exposes the contemporary appearance of the sugar factories as run-down ruins of savage capitalism. It contains current photographs of almost all of the sugar factories on the territory of Slovakia. A collection of video interviews with stakeholders from the sugar industry is also part of the archive. Their role in the transformation after the fall of communism is critically examined. A work table is integrated into the archive, offering tools that are used for the manual production of a sugar loaf. A video illustrates its production and packaging. With her series of objects made of sugar mass, Stena Kolyachkova refers to the chequered history of sugar. The artist has assembled the individual parts in a modular approach to form sculptures. Some are reminiscent of grand vases in their shape, others of precious goblets or chalices. Three photographs complete the ensemble. They show the sugar objects in a deliberately chosen historical setting. Based on historical documents concerning the former sugar refinery in Graz Geidorf from 1821 to 1881, Elisabeth Geschiel developed an architectural plan and weaves the threads of the past into the present. She applies the photographic printing process of cyanotype. Also on display are two sewing works on paper showing illustrations of the sugar beet and sugar cane the two plants mainly used for sugar production from the 19th century onwards. In 1928, permission was granted to operate a sugar factory in Enns, Upper Austria. In 1988, this sugar factory was closed down for economic reasons. Subsequently, the cultural centre, de Zuckerfabrik, was set up in the former factory premises. In Isa Rosenberger's work, the stage of the cultural centre becomes the setting for a scenic tour through the history of the factory, a procession through economic, political and ecological crises and transformation processes. Immediately after World War II, there was a dramatic shortage of basic foodstuffs in Styria. In this period, the artist's grandfather opened a molasses factory in Fonsdorf. In her approach to the family history, Reza Perntaler began to grow sugar beet herself. She captured the harvested specimens in hand-coloured photographs. Additionally, a display case contains a selection of documents on the brief history of Fonsdorf's molasses production. The starting point of Focus Corpus contributions to the exhibition is the oldest sugar refinery on the territory of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, which was founded in Fiume, today's Rijeka, in 1750. The artists process the so-called Veduto Ideate, which contain a rare depiction of racialized slave labour in Austria-Hungary. They then refer to the invisible labour which enabled the industrial production of sugar and made visible the relation of Austria-Hungary, together with the port city of Rijeka, to the global flow of capital and the history of colonialism. 
Ferenc Groff's work is based on reproduced pages from the Code Noir, Black Code, a decree issued by France's King Louis XIV in 1685, which regulated the treatment of black slaves. It remained in force until the abolition of slavery in the French colonies in 1848. Work on the sugar plantations was the main area of work for the slaves. Ferenc Groff superimposes three sheets by Honoré Daumier, who became famous for his 1839 caricatures on the Côte Noire. With her series of photographs based on a performance, Alessandra dos Santos positions herself against patriarchy, racism and colonialism. She embodies a character who relates her experiences with these phenomena. The title of the work refers to a papal bull of 1452, which authorised the King of Portugal to conquer and enslave. Being geographically unlimited in its application, it served as the basis for future Portuguese colonisation. Luz Blanco created her work from two superimposed printed silk pieces, two archive images related to the sugarcane industry, slavery and stock market speculation. The two images dialogue with the erasure of memories and visualise an obliteration of the invisible labour force by the speculative power represented by the top image, a detail of a stock market share certificate for cane sugar. For the realisation of her work, Anna Penchon used the open source website combiendesucre.fr. She aims to show the absurd economic reality between the different actors of the sugar industry, as well as the hierarchy of social conditions and the omnipresence of the sugar lobby. On every page of this booklet, money no longer exists. Everything is transformed into sugar. The second contribution by Ferenc Kroff are two wall maps focusing on sugar cane and sugar beet and investigating their role in the history of slavery, the legacy of the plantation economy and the history of an industry. The world map visualises the production and trade volumes of sugar products. The diagram follows the fluctuation of sugar prices since the 17th century and shows links to key moments in the history of the sugar industry, as well as historical points of reference for this exhibition. Sugarcane serves as raw material not only for sugar and ethanol fuel, but also for bioplastic. The increased cultivation of sugarcane in Brazil and its devastating impact on the Amazon region is a starting point for Samuel Ferretto's fragile objects made of bioplastic containing sugar. The semi-transparent envelopes refer to the need for clear vision in economic and political contexts. Her research on German sugar companies led Pierre Lanzinger to Klein Wanzleben, which has ideal growing conditions, a large factory and also significant seed production. The eventful history of the company there, the achievements developed and the European and global connections inspired the artist to create a board game. In a playful way, many details and different perspectives on a modern product can be traced and critically examined. Sandro Sulabaridze looks into current developments around the Agara Sugar Factory, founded in 1933 in the centre of Georgia. In 2017, it ceased operation and 481 workers lost their jobs. After five months of unemployment, they launched a campaign, Make Agara Work Again, and marched 144,000 steps towards Tbilisi as a form of protest. As a result, operations were resumed with state aid. In seven chapters, Kyo Kim develops an alchemy of sugar. He offers philosophical reflections on the links between sugar and data flows, economics and psychology. At one point it is said, sugar is an essential nutritional substance for human homeostasis. 
But in this era of sweetness flowing in our veins, is it us that consumes the sugar? Or is it the sugar that consumes our life to stay sweet all the time?